What's up, Queens? It's Stacy. For me, not every beauty, not every beautiful clothes uh, or trendy one could fit into everybody's everyone's body. And for me, it's about styling them your way. How to make them look special on on your body. So that's what I call fashion. That's what I call fashion. You know, you don't have to wear like everybody else. You just need to be yourself and um, know your body type. That's all. In which she said he had worked hard as a cabinet maker and took pride in his work. She described him as a happy-go-lucky and football mad. He loved Tottenham Hotspur. Tottenham Hotspur. Mr. Shearing, who had children, was an exceptionally loyal man, caring, warm, and kind. She described the defendant 99 call as chilling, adding she may have been a good nurse, but that doesn't make her a good person. Sasha was a QC mitigating shed said the married couple had a complex relationship. She says she loved him despite the complexities of that relationship and she still loves him. Mr. Watts said it was a relationship that involved regular domestic violence. Sherry, who wore a gray prison issue tracksuit, looked straight ahead as the judge sentenced her to life in jail. Man shot dead by police in South London was said to become father. Chris Kepa, who was in his 20s, died in hospital in the early hours of Tuesday morning after being shot about 10 p.m. on Monday night in Streetham, Streetham, Streetham Hill. A man who was shot dead by police after chased in South London was, was said to become a father, his fiance mothers has said. Chris Cable, who was in his 20s, died in, his, in the hospital in the early hours of Tuesday morning after being shot up at about 10 p.m. on Monday night in Streetham Hill. The police, the police watchdog, which in, is investigating the incident, said a single round had been fired by armed officer. Metropolitan police officers said they used a tactic, tactic where they deliberately crashed into a car and in an attempt to bring the chase to an end in Crystal Gardens, a residential road. Some paying tribute at the scene, at the scene said Mr. Kepa was a rapper known as Matix or Mad H67, but Kim Alien, whose daughter was engaged to Mr. Kepa, said this was not true and that he had an expertiseship to become an architect she said he was so loved he was so funny he was super kind crazy he was always happy he would do anything for you he was a fiance he was due to get married in five months time he got a baby on the way that he was he's never going to see it's horrible it's so shocking and so sad question why police shot mr Kaba and added her daughter is in a tremendous amount of she added she cannot present her feelings because it's a time of pain. It's a time of pain that you cannot explain. The baby is due in November. If that was a white boy, he would have got a chance to get out of the car. Jefferson Balsala, who said he was Mr. Kaba's cousin, said the driver was a musician who went by the stage name Itch. He added he was a good person, a good, a happy guy. He didn't deserve that. No one deserved that. No one deserves that. Nobody deserves to be shot by the police, whether they are a good person or a bad person. Police said Mr. Kaba received first aid from officer at the scenes before being taken to hospital, but he died at 12.16 a.m. A 39-year-old man who lives on nearby Newport Road and asked not to be named said the driver drove up Newport Road and turned up Crystal Garden. A police car came down Christ Crystal Gardens and crashed into him. Another police car came in behind him and they had him locked in at the bottom of Crystal Gardens. The car was immobile, immobile while he, when he was shot. 
Another witness told the Evening Standard that the man who was shot driving an Audi tried to ram his way past the police cars. Gardens are in place on Crystal Gardens and Newport Road with a farm sit tent put up and officer gathering evidence at the scene. The Independent Office for Police Conduct IOPC said it had collected footage, footage from police vehicles, a police helicopter and officer body-worn video as part of its investigation into the incident. IOPC London Regional Director Salon Asim said when the police use fatal force, it is important that there is a ro robust, robust, robust independent investigation to establish all the all of the circumstances circumstances surrounding what happened. It is natural that the community wants answer quickly, but I would ask the, that people refrain from speculation that may be unhelpful to all of those affected. I want to reassure everyone concerned by this incident that our investigators are working hard to establish the entire sequence of events which result in this man's death. Teenagers stabbed to death and another critically ill after a highly worried incident in East London. Two teenagers were found which, with stab wounds following a disturbance involving a large group of people in Lichfield Road in the East London borough of T Tower Hamlets at about midnight on, on Sunday. A teenager have, stab have been stabbed to death and another is critically ill in hospital after a highly worrying incident. Scotland Yard said they found two males with stab wounds after being called to a disturbance around midnight involving a large group of people in Lichfield Road Town Tower, Hellas, East London. A murder investigation is now underway, but no arrests have been made yet, said police. The teenager who died, believed to be aged 17, was pronounced dead by at 1.54 a.m. on Sunday. The second man taken to the hospital is thought to be 18. Detective Chief, Chef, Chief Inspector Mark Rogers of the Met Specialist Crime Command said, this is a highly worrying incident that has left one young man dead and another fighting for his life in the hospital. I'm aware of reports saying that about 100 people armed with weapons were involved. The information does not appear to be worldly accurate. We know a significant number of people were caught up in this incident, but not necessarily directed, involved, or armed with weapons. The force said it has yet to arrest anyone in connection with the stabbing. Anyone who has information that can help including pictures or footage of the incident is asked to call the Metropolitan Police Major Incident Room on 020-8345-3715 quoting reference operation while cast alternative call Crime Stoppers anonymously on 0800-555 and 111. The incident comes man shot dead in West London. The incident comes hours after a boy believed to be 12 was stabbed in the East London borough of Newham. Meanwhile, police have arrested a 29-year-old man on suspicion of murder following the death of a man in West Kingston, Kensington in London. Officers were called to Kensington High Street at about 2 a.m. on Sunday. They found a man believed to be in his 20s with gunshot wounds and provide emergency first aid until the arrival of the, of the London Ambulance Service and London Air Ambulance. The man was taken to a central ho London hospital where he later died. Man uses his car to stop out of control vehicle with ill driver on busy motorway. John Barlow said he thought the driver was dead when he first noted the Audi in the outside lane of the M62 going slower and slower. 
a motorist has described the dramatic moment he used his car to stop another vehicle whose driver had fallen seriously ill at the wheel on a busy motorway. John Barlow thought the other driver was dead when he saw the car heading slowly along the overtaking lane of the M62 near Leeds on Saturday. Fearing a crash, he managed to get his Hyundai in front of the ill driver's Audi and then take his foot off the accelerator and bring the car behind to a stop. He was then able to get out and help the man who was barely breathing. After trying to break into the locked vehicle using his elbow, Mr. Bello Barlow was helped by a traceman trace with a hammer to get a set to the stricken middle H driver. Then the, and then tie his head, his, his head back to free his airway. Other then stopped to help, including a doctor on the other carriage, carriage way of the M62 who traveled to the next junction, turned around, then battled through the backup traffic to get to work with a defibrillator. Mr. Barlow, a 59-year-old martial arts instructor from Middleton, Greater Manchester told the PA news agency he had first noted the 80 in the outside lane going slower and slower and pull alongside. He said he looked dead at the wheel. I could see his lips were blue and he had blood trickling down his face. He, his head was tiling forward. I thought, oh my god, I got to stop him. I matched his speed, then eased my way in front of him, and then slowly took my foot off the accelerator. He was driving his wife, Chrisley, and son, Joey, seven, to pick up a new kitten in Honfrag, West Yorkshire, and his son in the back screamed as the runway, runaway car behind bumped into him. I guess the car behind was going 30 miles he hit my car a couple of times and then we came to a stop, he said. Other drivers stopped at the scene, bringing the four-lane carriage way, carriage way to a halt. Uh, an advisor and uh, an off-duty female police officer took over the first aid until paramedics arrived. Mr. Barlow said everyone was amazing. It was a real team effort. They got the man on the floor. Then the doctor jumped in as well. The next day, Mr. Barlow received a call from yes, West Yorkshire police thanking him and he was told the driver has suffered a seizure but was it well enough to go home. And he asked for people to think about taking a first aid course and having something in their car that could be used to break a window in an emergency. Florida man had arm bitten off in alligator attack before getting lost in woods for three days. She dragged me under a three. A Florida man who had his arm ripped off by an alligator as he swam across a lake has offered some advice, saying leave them gators alone. Eric Marta from Sarasota was taken to hospital after the attack at Lake Manatee Fish Camp in Mayaka City in the U.S. state on 17 July. Now out of hospital and adjusting to life without his arm, he has spoken about the scary incident which saw him maimed by the alligator and wander around lost for three days. He said he came across the lake and decided to swim across instead of walk around it. I looked over and there's a gator on my right hand side so I went to swim and she got my forearm 
so I grabbed her like this. She was trying to roll, but she snapped my head, so my arm went backwards completely. Mr. Marta said. He said he had to fight for his life. She, she dragged me under three times. She already got my arms, so when we came up the third time, she finally did a dead roll and took off with my arm. He managed to get out of the lake, but then spread, spent three days trying to find his way. You can't see anything. Sometimes I feel like I was walking in circles. I didn't know. So I started following the sun and power lines, stuff like that, things I could see. After three days in the swamp, he said he stumbled on a fence and a man on the other side. I said, hey man, I need some help. And he says, what are you doing? And I said, a gator got my arm. And now he's adapting to a new normal with a new perspective. And he has some alligator-based advice. Do not feed the gators or all right, and you guys know who you are, throwing rocks at them and stuff. I've been, I've seen it on the job sites. Leave them gators alone, he said. Man, 23, admits killing Canadian teenager he met on dating app. Ashley was moved to the UK only three months before she was stabbed to death by her boyfriend. A 23-year-old man from Essex has admitted to murdering his teenage Canadian girlfriend. Jack Seppel killed 19-year-old Ashley Westworth from Vernon in British Columbia at a house in Chelmsford in February after meeting her on a dating app. Officer were called to an actress in Tennyson Road shortly after 4 p.m. on 1 February after, after reports of a disturbance. Paramedics tried to save Miss, Miss Westmore, but she was pronounced dead at the scene. An inquest hearing was told that she died of stab wounds to the chest. In a brief hearing at Chelmsford Crown Court, several several barristers said a fireatrice had indicated that the defendant was fit, fit, fit to plead. Christopher Paxton, QC for several, said that the issue of fitness is now resolved and requests that the defendant be asked to enter a plea. The court clerk read the single charge of murder and civil standing in the secure dock in a long white sleeve top with tattoos on his face and hand. Reply, I'm guilty. Judge Christopher Morgan told Stepple, by your plea of guilty to murder, there's only one sentence that can be passed and that's a life sentence. He remained the defendant in custody until a date is found for sentencing. Mr. Was Worth moved to Chelsford in November 2021. She wrote on Facebook. Earlier this year, she posted photos online of her amazing trip to London, where she had been sightseeing. London therapist accused by sister of stealing from rich mother tells court of threatening relationship. Jonathan Phil from Kilburn, Northwest London, told Southwark Crow Court, "My mother liked to wear fashionable clothes. She liked to wear skinny jeans and she liked to wear jackets, and she would shop everywhere." A therapist accused by his sister of stealing from their wealthy mother's bank account has told a court of their threatening relationship he has with his, his sibling, sibling, sibling. Jonathan Field denied two charges of thief from his 89-year-old mother who is reportedly suffering from significant cognitive decline in a private prosecution from his sister Lou, Louise Radley. Phil 62 appeared at Southwark Crowd Court after being accused of taking more than 
1.5 million pounds of Hannah Bill's life savings once she became too ill to look after her financial affairs. The London therapist has now been cleared of stealing 1.3 million pounds from a joint Swiss bank account in his and Mr. Phil names between May 2015 and November 2017. Judge Jeffrey Parents directed the court jury to return a non not guilty verdict after saying, um, as a matter of law, it is not legally thief to effectively steal from yourself. Phil denies the further charges of their relating to almost two hundred seventy thousand pounds allegedly stolen from his mother, Arizal Bank Lumi account. This sum is thought to have been taken through withdrawal of cash with ATMs, using Mr. Bill credit cards for shopping spreads and making bank transfers between October 2014 and September 2017. A relationship is non-existent. Bill offered evidence of a fraud relationship with his sister by telling the court how he was banned from her home around 2006 and that their relationship has, has since gone worse. Bill from Kilburn, Northwest London, described their relationship as fraud, framing, and non-existent. However, he has an excellent relationship with his mother, who he visited up to eight times a year in Tel Aviv, Russell, where she retired with her late husband, Monty, who died in 2010. Bill had worked for the family clock and watched film before becoming a therapist and said his parents were extremely generous to him and his sister. He told the jury his mother, who support who had supported him through his drug addiction in his twenties, was not a mister and spent her mon money freely, with her also was also helping the siblings purchase property properties. Mr. Phil liked to have at least 500 pounds in cash and often gave money and presents to the accused son and the daughter of his current partner, Phil told the court. My mom would shop everywhere. Persecutor Adam, Adam Gart preservedly implied to jurors that it was unlikely Mr. Phil has been responsible for a magical mystery tour of spending during a trip to London in April and July 27, with transaction totally out of keeping with the expenditure of a lady in her advanced years. Her son denied all deep allegations, saying my mother liked to wear fashionable clothes, she liked to wear skinny jeans, and she liked to wear jackets, and she would shop everywhere. She would buy presents for other people, flowers, chocolates, jewelry, jewelry for herself very rarely. He added she would buy perfumes and skin, skin creams of a specific make and brand she liked. The trial continues. Pilot who threatened to crash intentionally in Mississippi had no license and faces terror charges. Corey Wayne Patterson is arrested after a plane comes down near Ripley, Mississippi nearly five hours after an emergency call was made to police with a pilot threatening to crash into a Walmart store in Tupelo. Final suspect in Canada mass stabbing has died. Miles Sanderson and his brother Damon, who was found dead on Monday, were suspect of killing 10 people and injuring 80 others, 18 others in one of the deadliest attacks in Can Canada modern history. The final suspect in the recent mass stabbing in, in and around Canadian Reserve has died after being run off the road. Police have confirmed. Mauer Sennison, 32, was found near the town of Western in the central 
province as officers respond to reports of a stolen vehicle after being drove, driven by a man armed with a knife, the Royal Canadian Mount Police RCBMP said. Officer rammed Sanderson's vehicle off the road into a ditch, ditch, and he was taken into custody, but went into what a spokeswoman described as a medical district. He was taken to hospital but died shortly afterwards. Ten people were killed and 18, 18 injured after the attack, attacks in and around this James Smith Cree Nation community in the central province on Sunday. Ten victims remain in hospital, three of them in a critical condition. A press conference confirming Miles Anderson's death, RCMP Assistant Commissioner Rhonda Blackmore said he had visited James Smith Cree Nation, hoped to nine of ten victims, and said many of them had witnessed incredible trauma. Many people haven't slept, she said. They told me every time I close my eye, I hear noises. I hope this gives some, them some sense of closure and that they can rest easier tonight knowing Miles is no longer at large. I know they are able to start healing. Hundreds of police officers under, under, undertook an intensive manhunt for suspect Miles and his brother Damon Sanderson who had fled the crime scenes. Damon was found dead in the grassy areas of James Smith Cree Nation on Monday with injuries police and said were not self-inflicted. Miles Sanderson, who officer described as armed and dangerous, remained on the loose until Wednesday afternoon. The stabbing rampage on Sunday was one of the deadliest attacks in Canada modern history. Police said some of the victims appeared to have been target while others were attacked at random. Officer would have not revealed a possible possible motive, but a statement from an indigenous group from the province suggests the stopping could be drug related. But Miss Blackmore said unfortunately now that Miles is decayed, we may never have an understanding as to that motivation. Question are beginning to be asked about why Miles Sanderson, with 59 conviction and a long history of violence, was out of the street, out on the street. The 32-year-old was released by a parole board in February while serving a sentence of more than four years on charges that include assault and robbery. But he had been wanted by police since May, apparently for violating the terms of his release. Unveil students returned to school for the first time after a mass shooting that killed 20, 21st. I want to just shelter her as a mom, just keep her home. But of course, I don't want her to live in fear, said the mother, said the mother of one student in Texas community. Students and teachers returned to school Tuesday in the heartbroken community of um, Uville, Texas for the first time since 19 children and two educators were killed during a mass, mass shooting at, at an element at an element, elementary school in May. As children return to as children return to the classroom, the town the town continues to mount those who were killed and de demand a accountability in the in deadly shooting at Rob Elementary School during which law enforcement officers waited more than one an hour before entering a fourth grade classroom where the gunmen carry out the attack. The first day brought anguish for parents and for parents whose children died in the massacre. Massacre. Mass, massacre. Stephen Gracia, whose nine-year-old daughter Elena was killed, said he was an emotional wreck Tuesday morning and felt a surge of anger. I couldn't find the tears, but then I thought back to my Ellie and know she wouldn't want me to feel that way. He wrote in a post on social media, thinking of all the first day of school with my Ellie, no one expected to have to bury their child after leaving them at school. He said in another post, Jennifer Lugo, Ellie's mother, said in a post the night before the first day of school that her stomach was in a big knot and she was sure the family would be leaving the house with tears and not smiles. 
I'm missing one of my babies. She said, adding that Ellie loved school and was always excited to get up and get ready for with her sister. Kimberly and Felix Rubio, whose daughter Lexi was killed, said ahead of the first day of school that they were frightened, frightened, frightened for their life, other for their five other children. I don't know that the school district has done everything that I would, see, would like to see as far as security measures, but I also know it's important for the kids to have some sort of routine, so trying to balance what's best for them. Kimberly said, Lexi has been on her mind, she said, and meeting her youngest son teacher was incredibly difficult. It's incredibly difficult to get, go on campus knowing that Lexi is not going to be admitting a teacher to be meeting a teacher this year, Kimberly said. Students across the state were marooned to school Tuesday as part of the UV community. Rob Elementary has not re reopened since the shooting, and its surviving student has been scattered to different schools in the area. The school district also added virtual options this year for parents who didn't feel comfortable sending their children back into a classroom. Parents arriving at some local school Tuesday morning were greeted with taller fancies, increased security and cameras, a large law enforcement presence, more counselors and even emotional support dogs. Outside Dalton Elementary School in Uvale, it's true said that no that one of her children had attended Rob Elementary at the time of the shooting and had received counseling because she was traumatized. But um, Natalie, whose children are seven and eight years old, says she felt safer with the with the added security measure. I'm on the positive side, so I hope that what happened last year won't happen again, she said. For right now I think they are in good hands. Pre-kindergarten teacher Belinda reminds says she wasn't nervous about the start of the school year in the shadow of the tragedy. She's happy that school is starting again, but also just a bit sad for the kids, she said. Her nephew attended Rob Elementary last school year. We asked him and she and he just stayed quiet. So I know he's a bit nervous, but we are happy that school is starting back up and when we start, I think it will get all I would think it will get all better. She said, we have to just continue to move forward. Late last month, Uvale School pol Police Chef Pete Arondondo was fired by Texas City's school board, which voted anonymously to oust him. The Uvale chief removed capped three months of outrage over the botched law enforcement response to the shooting at Rob Elementary. One hour, 14 minutes, and eight seconds passed from the time police entered the building May 24 until the gunman was killed. Texas Department of Public Safety Director Steve McCraw has said. A scouting report released in July by Texas House Committee investigating the mass shooting fault systemic failures and poor decision making by law enforcement and the school district and her her husband julio have made helping their 10 year old daughters return to school a priority the girl medicine was at rob elementary the day of the shooting the family has enrolled medicine in a private school which they say made safety upgrades after the shooting. I want to just shelter her as a mom and just keep her home, but of course, I don't want her to live in fear, she said. Here was, here's what you need to know about Liz Truss, Britain's new leader. Sometime compared to UK first female leader, Margaret Thatcher Truss has also been accused of being a political killman. London as a girl and a young woman, Liz Truss protests against them, against then Prime Minister Mar Margaret, Margaret Thatcher that, and call for the abolition, abolition of the monarchy. monarchy. Decades later, having risen through the ranks of Thatcher's conservative party,
Party Trust 47 on Tuesday was appointed to the United Kingdom Prime Minister by Queen Elizabeth II. As she headed to No. 10 Downing Street, Truss looks eager to rule in the image of the famously blunt and strong-willed economist whose legacy still divides this country. Her victory means she will become the country's third female leader after Thatcher and Theresa May. The, the Irish lady, as Thatcher was known, the, was the 20. 20th century longest serving British leader and birthed an ideology, Thatcherism, that still dominates the party with its low tax, high growth, economic liberalism. Serving as pr premier primer from 1979 to 1990. When she was forced to resign by her own government, Thatcher was a strident cold warrior and a supporter of free markets, and especially close to President Ronald Reagan, one of the Britain's most divisive prime minister, revile, revile and rever in almost equal measure to this day. She's best known for her police policies. She's best known best known for her policy on degree deregulation, privatizing state-owned companies, and smashing the power of unions. She died in 2013. Whether international or not, observers, observers and the public have pointed out Trust appears to have a habit of recreating iconic Thatcher public appearance. While serving as foreign security Secretary Truss was accused of consciously admiring Thatcher by posing in a ch Challenger 2 tank while visiting British troops in Estonia. A famous picture of Thatcher in a Challenger tank in Germany in 1986. When visiting Russia, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov at the Kremlin in February, she wore a box. A box for a hat that again was compared to that worn by Thatcher on a Russia trip in 1987. During the conservative leadership contest, Truss wore an outfit strictly similar to one Thatcher had worn for an election broadcast in 1979, a black blazer and a white shirt with a bow tie at the front. For Truss cried Critics, the similarities to Thatcher's are the best premature and worst lud ludicrous. I don't think there is anything in it. They are completely different people. Trust supporter Andrea, Andrea Andino, 55, insisted outside the venue where Trust was announced the new leader of the Conservative Party on Monday. Andino wore a t-shirt in Liz with Trust. She's different. I don't think she will follow Thatcher in any way, she added. Timothy Kerhope, a conservative member of the upper chamber of the British Parliament, also dismissed the comparison, but for different reasons. I regard any comparison between Truss and Thatcher as derisory, he said in an email. I work as a government with under Mar Margaret Thatcher. She was a Colossus in politics, there is absolutely no way that Truss could ever get anywhere near the achievements of Thatcher, he said. Truss herself complained to BBC Radio 4 in July that women tend to get compared to Thatcher whether they are resemble her or not. I'm on my own person, she said. James Cleverly, who served as an education minister under Boris Johnson, echoes these sentiments. She's a woman in politics, though comparisons, comparisons are inevitable. And he said, she is Liz Trust, she's her own person. To those, to those of us who have studied Thatcher, she's hardly in the same league, at least on, at least on current form, said Professor Tim Bell, an expert on British politics and the Conservative Party at Queen Mary, Mary University of London. While Thatcher was regarded then and now was a conviction politician who, who embodied her beliefs, 
Trust have been accused of being a politi political chamberlain, flip-flopping on major poli policies and criticized for lacking hard and fast principles. She was an activist for the centrist Liberal Democrat Party as a college student. We do not believe people are born to be are born to be ruled. She, has, she said while arguing passionately for the abolition of the monarchy, monarchy at the party conference in 1994, a temptation to just how far she has traveled politically. Trust campaign forbidden to remain in the Europe Union only flip side and later support persists once the country has voted to leave in 2016. The commitment to Brexit and unlocking its supposed benefits is now a core, a core pillar of her platform, platform, an attitude that could lead to a heated and ex expensive legal battle, battle with the European Union and the Republic of Ireland over the complex of Northern Ireland Protocol. While Trust said during the Brexit referendum campaign that Britain sh shouldn't spend years in massive divorce from Europe, she may be about to uh, preside over exactly this. Born in Oxford in 1975, Mary Elizabeth Trust is the daughter of John Kenneth, a math professor at the New at the University of Leeds, and Priscilla Trust, a nurse. In the biography section of her website, she described her parents as left wing. When she was four, the family relocated to Pasley, a town near Glasgow in Scotland. They moved again in 1985 to the northern English city of Leeds in West Yorkshire. Trust re fre frequently refers to herself as a York Yorkshire woman. Yorkshire woman. A falsy attempt to contract her upbringing with the largely affluent Southern English background of many conservative members and activists. Throughout her leadership campaign, Trust said her vision of conservatism was inspired by seeing fellow, stu fellow students at, at the local public high school struggling in an overly bureaucratic failing system. Many of the children I was at school with were let down by low expectations, poor education standards, and a lack of opportunity, she said at her leadership launch July 14. Former student and staff at Raleigh, Raleigh and also local politicians dispute trust portrayal, accusing, accusing her of unfairly meddling the school for political gain. It is located in one of the most affluent areas of Leeds, and it certainly could never be described fairly as a sink school. He said via email, referring to British terminology for a failing and under underachieving school. Her contentions about her deprived background as the daughter of the university professor are a load of nonsense. Hope said. After graduating from Oxford in 1969, she abandoned the Liberal Democrats and joined the Conservative Party. The dismay of her left-leaning father, he was quite horrified, she told the Times newspaper in 2012. After college, Trust worked as a graduate trainee, account, accounted for the energy giant Shell and later the the telecommunications company Cable and Wireless. In 2000, she married fellow accountant Hugh O'Leary, Larry, and they have two daughters. After a youth of on the center left university prime trust for conservation to the right, I met Tories and I realized that they didn't have two heads and were actually good people, she told the Daily Mail in 2019. Trust stood as a Tory candidate in the election of 2001 and 2005, losing both both times. It would take another five years before she was finally elected as the MP for South West Norfolk. Norfolk. Trust has served in various cabinet positions since 
2012 under the governments of David Cameron, Theresa May and Johnson. It was under Johnson that she was promoted to foreign minister, one of the most powerful positions in government. Tess was leading the transitions to oppose Brexit's trading rim and forking new diplomatic ties. The Conservative Party may have ditched Johnson, but his brand of Populism looks to looks says to stay under the new prime minister. She stay loyal to Johnson. She told the membership that they want to hear on the economy and taxations rather than any hard truths. She is a fierce brister and an anti woke warrior. Bell said, "Trust may be compared to Thatcher, but her critics believe she has much more in common with her predecessor." I regret that a list trust primership would be a continu continuation of the Boris Johnson style. Kipper said, a trust government would be even more divisive, divisive and include individuals who are notable only for their extreme or eccentric view, he said. Steve Bannon expected to face state indictment in New York, Manhattan DA office had opened an investigation into Bannon in connection with his role in a charity that was supposed to use private funds to build the U.S.-Mexico border wall. Almost two years after he received a pardon from President Donald Trump in a federal fraud case, Steve Bannon is expected to face state indictment in New York. In a statement first shared with NBC News on Tuesday night, Bannon said New York has now decided to pursue phony charges against me 60 days before the midterm election. This is nothing more than a Persian political weaponization of the criminal justice system, added Bannon, who, was, who once was the chef of White House strategist in the Trump administration. The statement came after the Washington Post. Citing, citing people familiar with the situation, reported that Bannon planned to surrender Thursday. NBC News has, has asked the Manhattan District Attorney Office for a comment. The District Attorney Office last year opened an investigation into Bannon in, in connection with his role in a charity that was supposed to use private funds to build the U.S.-Mexico border wall, NBC News reported in February 2021. The previous year, Bannon was indicted with three other people on charges of taking money donated to help build a wall along the southern border. Federal prosecutors uh, alleged that Bannon's We Build the Wall campaign, which raised more than $25 million, defraud hundreds of thousands of donors who contribute to an effort to build a wall along the U.S.-Mexico border, one of Trump's key campaign promises. Border. Trump pardoned Bannon in January 20, 21, 2021, but presidential pardons on, apply only to federal charges, meaning New York is not prohibitable prohibited from pursuing similar charges. I am proud to be a leading voice on protecting our, our body, our borders, and building a wall to keep our country safe from drugs and violent criminal, criminals. But it said in Tuesday night statement, they are coming after all of us, not only President Trump and myself. I am never going to stop fighting. In fact, I have not yet begun to fight. They will have to kill me first. Separately, Bannon was convicted of contempt of grasses Congress after he refused to answer a question from the House January 6th committee. A jury found him guilty on two counts of contempt of Congress in July. A woman jumped from a moving car after being kidnapped by a man who asked for water, authorities says. Jeremy Alaska, 31, is accused of holding the woman at night point at an a knife, knife point in Washington state. Authorities in Washington state identify a suspect Tuesday who they say carjacked a woman and held her at knife point, knife point until she escaped by jumping from a moving car. The woman had given water to Jeremy Alaska, 31, after, 
after he approached her vehicle asking for some in an incident that began in Vancouver, Washington. Early Saturday, the Clark County Service Office said in a news release, Alaska is expected to be charged with kidnapping, robbery, and attempt in eluding after he fled from officers, the sheriff's office said. The woman, who has not been identified, told authorities after that after she gave Alaska water, she allowed him into her car. Alaska produced a knife and used the threat of violence to take control of the car. The release Elch, adding that he drove roughly 15 miles to the city of Camus. Alaska slowed down on a dirt road, authorities, authority, authorities said, and the woman jumped from the car and started banging on the doors of the nearby homes. A resident, James Wood, told NBC affiliate KGW on, of Portland, Oregon, 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 that he and his family awoke around 4.30 a.m. to the sound of a woman pounding on the back door of his home and moving the doorknob. She was desperate to get in, which I can't understand. Wood told the, the station, she told me that someone tried to kill her and someone stole her car. Was, was, was told the station that he called 911 after dispute, the deputies searched the area and found the car. The driver fled, according to the release. 11 minutes, 11 minutes later, and about eight miles away, authorities from the sheriff's office and the Vancouver Police Department were able to pin the car. And the release says Alaska, Alaska was taken into custody after he tried to free the vehicle. The release says he refused to provide his name and was identified through other names. The sheriff's office says it wasn't immediately clear whether he has a lawyer to speak on his behalf. Police say that he that they have found. Turning now to breaking news in the investigation of that missing Memphis jogger and mother of two, police confirmed today the body of 34-year-old Eliza Fletcher has. Police say that they have found the remains of the missing jogger Eliza Fletcher. Memphis authority have confirmed a body found during the search for Eliza Fletcher was identified as the 34-year-old woman who was abducted during a run Friday morning. NBC News just Chris reports on the news details police have released and the latest and the latest charges against the suspect charged with kidnapping Fletcher. And that is the end for today hope you guys enjoy this video and i'll see you guys in the next video see ya oh and by the way all the all the tips i gave you last time i hope it worked because um it worked for me and i think that it worked for most people with average memory i myself have average memory and i couldn't learn anything besides English because I hate everything. I hate every subject besides English. Um, uh, the only thing that I find English is interesting because it was another language. Um, and I hate math. I hate uh, math. I especially hate math and I don't want to, you know, calculate anything. And i not good, not good at calculating things. So that's why I hate math. And about English is that um, when I was small, when I was about um, nine years old, I watched Disney Channel a lot. And uh, that is when I know I like English because Disney Channel is all about English. If you don't, if you don't understand English, so yeah, I, uh, you know, I watch it. And although I don't understand a word it was saying about uh, what is the movie about and what it's called? Uh, I just remember the melody. Uh, you know, Phineas and Ferb, right? I just remember that uh, the song in the uh, the intro song, right from the start. I remember the melody, the way they pronounce, but I don't. Um, 
I don't know for sure um, how they pronounce it. So I just remember the melody and I sing along. So that is when I uh, remember all the stuff and all the words that I accidentally remember by uh, remembering the melody. So when I said that music can help you a lot, I mean it. So if you guys try it and if you have any, you know, like uh, positive uh, resolve, comment below and, you know, uh, follow for more if you like my tips and you find it uh, effective. So yeah, thank you and goodbye. Oh, one more thing. Um, I also like English and I only good at speaking and I don't, I'm not good at grammar. Yeah, <laughs> I also not good at grammar. I only good at speaking because I can, you know, like uh, mumbling to the sound and, um, you know, like for example, they they sing like, uh, what's going on? So I will like, ma 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 ma. I I I remember the sound. I don't I don't remember what they're saying, and, and I don't know what they're saying, but I remember the sound. So when I grow up, it means uh, when I was in uh, secondary school or something like that. I learn it and I know, oh, so that's what it is, that what it was about, and um, yeah, that's how I learn it. And I only get at speaking because I I remember uh, the basic words, the basic step that they say. For example, hello, how are you? How are you today? Uh, you're, you're good? Are you good? How are you today? Um, I'm good, thank you for asking. You know, like just basic stuff, and I. Um, get better and better through movies um yeah so yeah that's all i got i don't know um if i could help you with that but i think for myself i i'm getting better and you have to learn you 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 cannot learn english without learning it uh, you know without actually learning it. So you have to put time and effort into learning stuff. And eventually it will come out great. It will get you a positive result and a, a, a very good result that you want. So don't give up and don't lose trust in yourself, especially when you find it hard just to a break just take a break and you know get some air go outside uh, have fun with your friends for you know a day if you're feeling stressed about studying stuff and after that you you get it together and yeah just study dude that's it NHS staff told to take extra caution extracting organs after brain dead babies start breathing. The safety alarm sent to the staff at NHS blood and transport seen by Sky News advised them to pay particular particular attention particular attention to pre condition and red flags in children after the boy began breathing independently. The, child father, the child's father has told Sky New that extra caution is not good enough. They did four brain stem tests on him, test on him and certify his death. When I asked whether there was an alternative test, they said no. If there's just one test to prove someone is alive or dead, it should be 100% accurate. They said it's a miracle. It's not a miracle. This is faulty medical science. Doctors treating the child at the London Hospital conduct two sets of brain stem, stem, stem tests before seeking a second opinion to confirm their diagnosis. Two weeks later, a nurse at the hospital noticed the boy, then four months, was breathing. RM, ARMC, which, which says the test said in August it would rewind the code of practice on brain stem testing after the child case 
came to the light. This week, it, it told Sky News it has speed up the process with a report due to Freddie in months. It has no offer parents or hospital advice on what to do in the meantime. David Jones, a professor at bioethics at State Mary University, warned there was a risk of organs being extracted from living children if clinicians got diagnosis wrong. A doctor could have said this child is dead and they could have taken his organs, Professor Jones said. John says. They didn't, but they didn't because of an ongoing legal issue, and because they didn't, they later found out he wasn't dead. More and more uh, are now expressing expressing concerns about brain scene testing, according to Professor Jonas. If the test is a matter of life or death, um, if and if it's death means you can take organs, you want certainty. I think some of certainty has been taken away by this case. Rather than people who were spectators being a minority, I think there are a lot of people who have been who have become spectacle of the test, at least in relation to children.